Hi, I'm Stephen from Brow Supply, and I invented the Unique Roy Brew system. Today, we're going to be talking about the Eat Coil controller usage and operation. What I have in front of me is the Easy Boil 240 volt controller. Now, you can see that it's got a PID in the front panel here. It's got an element switch, a pump switch, a pump uh, uh, plug outlet, and attached to it, we've got a uh, uh, one meter power cord. So this is designed to plug into an L630 outlet. This controller can control up to 6,000 watts. It plugs into a 30 amp outlet and it controls you know, our brewing elements, our 240 volt brewing elements. What makes this controller um, unique is, well, it is a PID, but unlike most PIDs, which need to be auto-tuned, uh, this unit operates in a much more simple manner. And this is why we've chosen it for our, our brew systems. I like how easy it is to just kind of get it up and going. I find that auto-tuning, you have to have a full volume of liquid in, and auto-tuning um, is only relevant if you're brewing with the same volumes of liquid each and every time. And it just, you know, with the time that it takes to tune the controller, etc., we went with this one, which is the Easy Boil controller, and, uh, and we like to use it. So what I'm gonna show you is just how to get up and running. With the sensor plugged in, you can see that it has a temperature uh, display at the top. So that's your current display. At the bottom is your set point. I'm gonna unplug the sensor and you can see it says O-R-A-L and it's flashing. That means that it doesn't have a connection to your sensor. So if that happens, you know, you're not, your connection isn't being made, chances are you need to buy yourself a new uh, sensor. Okay, now it's plugged in and it beeps. It's showing the time there for a sec. Now, first of all, um, I'm just gonna show you how to move through these menu options. So you press once and this is the reset function and it says no for now and if I turn the knob to the right, it'll say yes. If I turn the knob again, we're gonna enter into mash mode, turn the knob again and that's boil mode. Now these are the brewing modes. These aren't set parameters, these are brewing modes. So if I'm gonna be mashing, I'm gonna turn it to mash, I'm gonna press enter. If I'm boiling, I'm turning it to boil and I press enter. It's very important to move between these modes from mashing to boiling, okay? So I'm gonna start with showing you just how to operate it in mash mode. So we're gonna go here to mash, enter. The first thing that I'm gonna show you to do after this is how to program the various settings. Now I'm gonna let it go back to the home screen, which it should do here in a second. I'll just press it and that'll go faster. Now we're back at home screen. I'm going to press for five seconds until it says go to mash. Now this is the mash control parameters. This is where I'm actually going to change the parameters and settings, you know, for the particular brew that I'm doing. Press again. This is the time I can control the time. So this is an hour. This is an hour and eight minutes. Okay. Press again, and that's the timer set point. So this is where you want the timer to start. Do I want the timer to start at 151 degrees or 152 or 153, right? So you can kind of set it. Usually I have the timer start at the same temperature as what I want to mash at, right? Kind of makes sense. Press again, and that's your alarm high. I'm just, what that means is mash alarm set temperature. So this is the temperature at which the alarm will um, go off at. Now, what I like to do is, um, is either, is, is set it a few degrees higher, just in case some, sometimes, um, you, you know, you might not have things set up perfectly. You just want to be alerted if the temperature gets a little bit too high. So I, I generally don't worry about that. I put it a few degrees 
higher than my mash temperature. Press it again, and it says EO. So that's my mash ending options. So what do I want the element to do? Right now it's set to off, but when the mash is finished, you can have the element remain on. Um, probably I would turn it to on because I'm gonna be going into the boil mode as soon as the mash is done and I don't want the temperature to start dropping if I haven't, if I'm you know not there right when mash kicks off. Press it again and we have attenuation constant. So with overshoot correction, um, you can adjust the amount of overshoot that you'll get during initial heat up. So for example, if the overshoot temperature is three degrees, the OSCR should be plus three. So it should, you should move that to three. Uh, so if you get to the temperature that you are set at for um, mashing in, let's say it's 152 degrees and it overshoots by three, well then you compensate by putting it to three. If it's perfect, you can leave it at zero. If it undershoots, you can go, you can adjust the amount of undershoot. So this is, this is um, gonna help you maintain that perfect accuracy during mash. Now the next mode here, ATTE, is attenuation constant. And this is basically there to adjust the stability of the temperature during mashing. The value is from minus two to plus two and the default is zero. Now if the temperature fluctuates more than a degree, you can increase the value. If the controller takes too much time to correct for a temperature drop, you can reduce ATTE to make the system a little bit more responsive for you. And that's everything for the MASH parameters. Now we're back in the home screen. Now I'm gonna press for five seconds again, and we'll go to, it says go to MASH, now we go to boil. Now we're gonna set the boil parameters. BAST is boil acceleration set temperature. Boil acceleration set temperature is set to 200 by default. You want to have this number under your boil temperature because it's essentially what it does is it's it's going to operate at full power up until this set point. Now, if in some situations you might boil at 207 degrees. It, well, you would want to maybe set your boil acceleration set temperature to 203 or 202 degrees. About five degrees under boil temperature is what I like to have it at. What it will do is it will coax you to a boil after this acceleration set temperature point and it will actually reduce the power to the element for you. It actually is designed to reduce the likelihood of a boil over. Press it again and you have B0, B-O-U-T, which is boil acceleration output power. Now, boil acceleration output power is default set to 100. That means you're gonna get 100% of your power to the element until it reaches B-A-S-T, which was that previous setting we spoke about. If you've got an extremely small batch and an extremely powerful element, you may reduce it, but usually I keep this at 100. B-T is boiling time set value. Now this is your timer, and how long are you gonna boil for? So default is an hour. I don't usually deviate too much from that. BTSP, boiling timer start temperature. Now this is where do you wanna start your timer? Now in the Unibrae brew system, I find that I don't see it get to 212, it's because the probe sits at the bottom of the kettle, and I mean, Come on, we all have a brain, we all know what boil is. Boil is uh, boil, and when something's moving, and if you've got bubbles, it's boiling. So I don't even look at what boil temperature is, and I hope that you don't either. I mean, I just think that it's, it's, it's really uh, an unnecessary thing. So if it's reading 209 degrees uh, when I'm boiling, well then great, I usually set it to, um, to, to that. Now, what, basically this is just where's the timer gonna start. Even if you have it set a degree or two under boil, it's, there's no harm in starting your boil timer um, before, before uh, it reaches like that absolute boil. The next setting here is BALH, and 
Um, what does that stand for? That stands for boiling alarm set temperature. Now, I like to have my boil alarm set a couple degrees under boil, you know. Um, I want to be warned because the, the kettle starts to swell. You see those proteins rising to the top and you want to be alerted beforehand. So I have it, you know, I, I like to know when I'm around 200 and 203 degrees or something like that, that I'm approaching a boil so that I can just keep my eyes on top of it and make sure that uh, it'll start, you know, uh, it, it usually will drop, uh, it'll drop output power um, after that point. BEO and that is boiling end options and it's default set to off, right? So when I'm done boiling temperature, uh, the, the, the element shuts off. Okay. So, um, you can, and then you press it again and now we're back to the home menu. Now, finally, I'm going to show you what the system settings are. Push for five seconds and turn it all the way to the right. That's system settings. Uh, TF is on by default and TF stands for timer functions. Do you want timer functions on this controller? You know, to be honest, sometimes I don't use timing functions. I like to use my iPhone, so I don't always have this set to on, but that's going to be your decision. TDLR um, is timer counting direction. Well, I like to count down, but you can change it to up if you want. Uh, PB is temperature reading offset. Um, if your uh, temperature sensor is, needs calibration um, and uh, um, you've got, you need an offset, that's perfect for that. Uh, generally, I don't find that we do need an offset at all. And here, press it one more time and you can choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. So uh, in Canada, we often operate on Celsius and that's kind of what I like to do. Um, now, finally, I just want to say that um, one, of the, one of the good features about this controller is you've got full disconnects. We've got a contactor inside. So when you switch it to off, you can hear that audible click. Click, that is our um, double pole contactor, which sits inside there. And it gives you full disconnects for full safety. Um, so, so that about sums it up for the Easy Boil controller. I hope that explains a couple things for you and makes it a little bit easier to use. Hey, if you like our videos, please like, comment, subscribe, share. If you've got any video ideas for us, I'd like to hear about those too. So please put them in the comments below. I'm Steven. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.